Monaco, one of the smallest countries in Europe, a place known for being extremely wealthy, having tons of gambling, and for being one of the last remaining monarchies in all of Europe. Monaco might be one of the wealthiest and safest countries in Europe, but what if I told you that Monaco had a much darker past than you might realize? Monaco has had heavy involvement with the Italian mafia, money laundering, and tax evasion. These aren't things that are too well known about Monaco today. So let's stop and take a look at Monaco's criminal past. Gambling is a major driver of Monaco's economy. In fact, casinos, their hotels, and casino-related tourism are all considerable portions of Monaco's economy. From April through March of 2022 alone, over $605 million flowed through the tiny country's casinos from gambling. This is important, because this large amount of money flowing through a casino makes Monaco a prime target for money laundering. Money laundering is a process in which criminals clean illegally earned money in order to look as if it were earned legally. Mafias and cartels have to launder money they have received from drugs, extortion, and other illegal activities to then be able to actually use that money without the government then catching on and arresting them. This process is extremely notorious in casinos because money can simply be converted into chips or slot machine vouchers, played just long enough not to arouse any suspicion, and then cashed out for new, clean money. Because of their profitable casinos, as well as only being nine miles from the Italian border, Monaco has historically been a major country of involvement for the Italian Mafia. This map shows where the most activity from Mafias occur, as well as just how close Monaco actually is for the mobs to utilize. Another major factor that has fed mob involvement in Monaco has been the microstate's tax-free, non-inquisitive banking system. Monaco does not have an income tax, and banks do not have any taxes on investment income, essentially meaning that people who invest money into Monaco's banking system often get to keep more money than in other banks. Monaco's banks also have been historically very secretive, not allowing international review by tax authorities until 2009. Hence, Monaco has also been a safe haven for many tax evaders who are able to avoid tax authorities within the nation. All in all, this has motivated large sums of money to pass through the small nation on the behalf of mobs and mafias. An investigation into money laundering in Monaco's banks during 1992 found that their banks held around $12 billion in mafia-related money. Another notable example of money laundering was with the case of Edmund Safra's Monegasque Bank. He notified the U.S. and Russian authorities that his Monaco bank had suspected around $4.5 billion of being laundered. Some Russian media outlets actually attribute this money laundering revelation as having caused the Russian financial crisis of 1998. Since Monaco has an embedded history with secretive, tax-free banking, and gambling is an integral part of its economy, it was only inevitable that the small nation would attract criminals. However, this is not to say that Monaco has not made strides to fight these criminal activities. In fact, in recent years, many changes to laws and banking practices have been made in an attempt to combat the large amount of criminal activity occurring within the country. The first anti-money laundering law in Monaco was made in 1993 and has been regularly amended to become better and more robust, currently being based off of a 2009 model. Monaco has also created a new special investigation unit tasked specifically with combating money laundering. This unit, called, quote, SICFIN, has the power to analyze and process any suspicious transactions from suspicious people, as well as having the power to conduct on-site visits of any of these suspicious individuals. Monaco has also began cooperating with, get ready because this name is a mouthful, the Committee of Experts on the Evaluation of Anti-Money Laundering Measures and the Financing of Terrorism, aka Moneyball, which is an organization which works with members of the Council of Europe in order to combat money laundering. Moneyball works alongside SICFIN in order to assess how the laws of the country are functioning to combat money laundering. These are all efforts that have been planned out by the now monarch of Monaco, Prince Albert II, who has gone on record as having said, quote, money and virtue should always go hand in hand. Another interesting change Prince Albert has made is that he actually put into law tax fraud. In the past, tax fraud was simply just not a crime in Monaco. This was actually a factor feeding the large number of tax evaders residing in the country. But in 2009, when Albert had Monaco adapt international tax law, this officially codified tax fraud as a crime. However, despite all of these pushes to combat crime in Monaco, it still has a long way to go. In a report on Monaco in 2022, Moneyvault claimed that there were still many flaws in Monaco's system. 
Moneyball only had indirect access to review information, meaning any information they received could have been tampered with. Furthermore, Moneyball found the conviction rate was extremely low in Monaco, with not a single person being convicted for money laundering in 2022, despite many investigations being open. A primary flaw in the process Monaco is having is that crime is committed abroad in other countries, with simply the money then being laundered back through Monaco banks. A further risk is that much of the money still being laundered through the country today is suspected to be used to fund terrorist organizations as well as Russian oligarchs. The Moneyfall report also gave a rating to Monaco on various services, which it received low ratings for the categories of money laundering investigations, prosecutions, and supervision. This means that Monaco is still at a considerably high risk for money laundering to this day. More than just flaws in their laws and prosecution, plenty of mob-style crime is still associated with Monaco. In 2018, an heiress to the second most important family in Monaco, Helena Pastor, was actually murdered by a hitman in order for her son-in-law to receive his inheritance. Another instance was when the personal private investigator to Prince Albert himself became a whistleblower, trying to bring attention to the corruption and Russian ties that the mini-state had embedded in its system. In response, Prince Albert claimed that this was an extortion attempt and declined all allegations. Monaco today might be a wealthy, safe, and renowned country in Europe, but it has had its run-in with criminality. Money laundering, tax evasion, and corruption are still common throughout the nation. The ruling monarch, Albert, has made leaps and bounds to root out criminals and make the nation on par with international criminal law, but just below Monaco's luxurious exterior lies some deeply embedded problems.